In this video, we are going to look into how to name binary compounds. For watching this video, I expect that you already have the idea of the first 20 to 30 elements with their symbols, the atomic numbers, how to write the electronic configuration, and how to get the number of possible charge ion and valency, the oxidation state, and uh, how to calculate the oxidation number of elements in a compound. And also must have had the idea of how to uh, form compound using criss-cross uh, theory or demonstration. And uh, also know the reactivity series. So that at the end of this video, we should be able to name a given binary compound without using tables of compounds and also write chemical formula of a binary compound without using tables of compound. And uh, we are going to start this by getting to know the rules for naming binary numbers. Rule 1. All group 1, 2, 3 elements retain their valence electrons as their charge, as their oxidation number, and as their valency in any compound they are found. I still have something like a scandium that is always plus three. I also have a silver that is always plus one and zinc that is always plus two. That means that whenever we see zinc, we're going to say it is plus two. We don't need to calculate and find what would be the oxidation state. We don't need to look for oxidation state of scandium. We don't need to look for oxidation state of silver. And also, if you notice that they uh, element is found in group 1, group 2, group 3. If it is in group 1, that means the oxidation state is always plus 1. And if it is in group 2, that means that the oxidation state is always plus 2. And if it is in group 3, that means that the oxidation state is always plus 3. Second rule, fluorine oxidation number is always minus 1 in all its compound. And uh, oxygen oxidation number is always minus 2 in all its compound except in the us side. In that plus side, it is minus one. Hydrogen oxidation number is always plus one when bonded with non-metals, but when it is bonding with metals to form hydrides, it is always minus one. And you should also know that the name of the highly electropositive element in the binary compound is named first, indicating the oxidation state. But we do this only if it is not in group one, two, three, and we do this by using uh, Roman numerals inserted in a bracket. Also, the last two to four letters of the element that is highly electronegative changes to IDE. Last but not the least that I'm going to give you is that the summation of all charges of oxidation number of a particular compound is always zero. For elements, it is always zero. For molecules, it is always zero. And for atoms, it is always zero. That means that a compound is neutral, an element is neutral, molecule is neutral, and atom is neutral. That's when you sum up all the charges there, it must give you zero. Now, we are going to take an example of this so that we can learn how to name this. Name the following binary compounds. The compounds are... We are going to follow the rules uh, to name this compound. Now, starting from the first one, Na, that is sodium, is highly electropositive. That means that it's going to remain as sodium, and it is found in group 1. So, therefore, its name has no oxidation state. We are not going to identify it as sodium 1, since we already know that it is found in group 1. Now, let's go for fluorine. Fluorine is highly electronegative. That, that is to say, fluorine is going to change from fluorine to fluoride. Therefore, the name is sodium fluoride. For the Al2O3, the Al is aluminium and the O is oxygen. Therefore, we are having aluminium is in group 3. Therefore, its oxidation state need not be mentioned in its binary compound but oxygen is highly electronegative here that means that it's going to change from oxygen to oxide now we're going to have aluminium oxide that is to say we only have only 
one aluminum oxide because aluminum does not have varying oxidation states therefore no need giving the oxidation number of aluminum and number of oxygen present has no need because if you know that it's aluminum bonding with oxygen all you need to do is the crease cross for question number three Iron is not in group 1, not in group 2, and not in group 3. Rather, it is even found in a transition element group, and it has a varying oxidation state. For our level, it can be plus 2 or plus 3. Therefore, we need to find out what is the oxidation state of this ion here. The oxidation state of Fe S is equal to 0. That means if we sum all the charges of Fe and S, is going to give us zero. And by the electronic configuration, valence, electron, charge, we find out that S is minus two. Therefore, we are going to have this as, remember I said this is minus two. Now we are looking for ion value. We are going to have it as, make Fe the subject formula we have. This point that ion in this compound here, is ion 2 not the ion 3 therefore we're going to call it ion 2 remember it is not found in group 1 not found in group 2 not found in group 3 therefore we call it ion 2 sulfide that means that the oxidation state need to be identified the same thing goes with this cu2o we need to find the oxidation state of cu in this compound you know that O is already minus 2. How many copper is here? We have 2 copper. So we have it as 2 copper plus oxygen will give us 0. That is the charge of 2 copper plus charge of oxygen will give us 0. Writing the oxidation state of oxygen, we have making 2 Cu the subject formula we have. But we are more interested in cu not 2 cu therefore we divide both sides by 2 to have therefore here we have copper 1 therefore we can name this as copper 1 oxide let's go for the last one for n2o3 oxygen is more electronegative and it is taken as minus 2 already gotten that from our rule therefore we have 2 of nitrogen adding together to 3 of oxygen, which when they sum up together, they must give us 0. 3 times minus 2 will give us minus 6. Let's make n the subject formula we have. Divide both sides by 2 so that we can actually make the n the subject formula we have. That is to say, n here, the oxidation state is 3. And if the oxidation state is 3, we are going to name this as nitrogen 3 oxide because the oxidation state is 3 therefore our answers become sodium fluoride aluminium oxide iron 2 sulfide copper 1 oxide and nitrogen 3 oxide okay i'm going to leave 10 exercises for you to do and we'll tell you the answer at the end of this video okay look at it H2O, NO2, N2H2, NH3, SO2, SO3, CAF2, MNO2, ZNO, ZNCl2. I would like you to name that. Now, let's look at how can we be able to transform this name back to this. That is how we can be able to write chemical formula when the name is already given to us. This is going to be a reversal of what we just did. And you know that I always tell you that the electropositive is name and in return is uh, name. It does not change, except if it is not found in group 1, 2, 3, or it's not something like scandium, nothing like uh, zinc or silver. Uh, we are going to leave the name without indicating the oxidation state. Now, but let's start with simple examples. Write a chemical formula of the following compounds aluminum chloride, ammonia, copper 2 oxide, sulfur 6 oxide. Now let's take it gently. 
Symbol for this aluminium is Al. Symbol for this chloride is Cl because it's coming from chlorine. You know that it changed to IDE. It's coming from chlorine. But the charges is plus 3 and minus 1 since aluminium is found in group 3. And chlorine by electronic configuration is 287. And by each charge it is minus 1. And if we change this value to its valence, we will have. Now by crisscross, 1 go to this, 3 go to this. That is what we mean by crisscross. We have Al1, Cl3, but we, there's no need of using this Al1. Therefore, we make it clear as therefore Al, Cl3 becomes the chemical formula for aluminum chloride. Let's do the same thing with ammonia. Please, ammonia is a special group, just like water. Water is H2O. It, it does not actually follow the direct way of naming it. It's supposed to be called hydrogen oxide. That is water. And that is actually what it is. Water is an oxide of hydrogen. But it has a special name called water. The same thing goes with this ammonia. Ammonia is a hydride of nitrogen. That is, for ammonia we have, this is the chemical formula for ammonia. No need to look at it. It has a special name, just like water. Let's go for the next one. Copper 2 oxide. Symbol for copper is Cu and it, it reads 2 oxide. That means that the oxidation state of copper here is 2. Copper 2 oxide. That means the oxide is coming from oxygen. Therefore, we're going to have O. And the oxidation state of oxygen here is minus 2. We change this to uh, valency. We will have by crisscross, this go to this, this go to this, we will have. Since they have the same two, two, we can cancel it together. We will have the value to be. That is the chemical formula for copper 2 oxide. Let's go for sulfur 6 oxide. Sulfur symbol is S. Since they say it's sulfur 6, we're going to have, remember they said sulfur 6 oxide. That is why I put that 6 up there. And oxygen is the oxide there. And the special state of oxygen there is minus 2. Let's change this value to valency. We will have, and mind you, now by crisscross, we are going to have this C's go to this and this 2 go to this. We will have, but this 2, there is something that can divide this 2 that can also divide this C's, which is 2. 2 divided 2 will give me 1, and 2 divided 6 will give me 3. We have, there's no need for this one. We just write it as SO3. Water, nitrogen 4 oxide, hydrazine, ammonia, sulfur 4 oxide, sulfur 6 oxide, calcium fluoride, manganese 4 oxide, zinc oxide, zinc chloride.